Hey guys, look what I got. That's right, I got the E-Flight SU-30 twin 70mm EDF jet. In this video, we are going to unbox it. We're going to take a look at all the parts and pieces. And then at the end, we're going to wrap things up with our pros and cons. Coming up next, we're going to see what's going on inside the box. All right, guys, this is what it looks like all packaged up. I just slid this big old chunk of foam outside of the box. And I have to say that the box is really heavy for an EDF jet. So this is going to be a big, heavy plane. I'm excited about that, scared about that, excited again on top of that. So coming up next, I'm going to do a nice tight scan of how this is packaged. And that's coming up next. Okay, so here's a nice tight shot of the scan. You can see the missiles, the nose cone, the fuselage, and of course, here are the main wings right there with that big old Russian star. And coming up next, we are going to show everything outside of the box, all spread around, and we'll do another scan that's similar to this coming up next. Okay, so this is a look at the fuselage. It is huge, guys, so I'm going to try and break this down into bite-sized pieces. There's all the stuff in the background, and this thing is substantial. I think that's the best way for me to describe it and not swear. Before I get this thing too assembled, let's take a good look inside this battery bay. I know a bunch of you have been wondering about that. So, definitely not a small battery bay. Got a medium-sized fist right there. So, I think a little bit bigger than the Freewing F-22 battery bay. I mean, a little smaller rather, but still should give us some, some options there for center of gravity, moving the battery around. And here's the receiver, a nice tight look on that. Here's a look at the canopy. Got some dashboard details there. Pilot not looking too shabby. All right, so here's a look at the false canopy on the bottom side of this plane. Here is a look at the rest of the fuse. This looks so incredible, guys. All right, so let's look at the two ESCs and have a look at the intakes. Now, you'll notice that there's a little bit of plastic spider web or whatever you want to call that in there. No big deal. Looks pretty cool. Nice big intakes. And let's look at the exhaust over here. Look at that, guys. My goodness. And coming up next, we're going to look at all those other parts and pieces. All right, guys, here are all these parts and pieces that we're going to go over right now. And of course, we're going to start with the main wing. This piece right here is plastic on the tip. And of course, we've got the navigation light right there. Right here, we've got a piece that... Uh, slides into the tail section. I do not know what it's called, but I do know that it should be magnetized. Just, it's not, but it should be magnetized just like the nose cone. I may modify that. I may also use double stick tape because that may make a difference between me being able to easily transport this lengthwise or not in my car. So I've got to slide it through the ski boot thing and that may or may not be an issue. Right here, we've got the rudder. And if you look right here, we've only got two screws for the rudder, which is cool. And then we've got ourselves a quick connect deal there. So the assembly of this should be very easy and straightforward, which is very cool. I plan just to run right by the manual. And then of course, when I'm done doing that, I will let you know how it goes, but we're still doing our tour here. We've got our carbon rod, of course, right there. And then here's a look at the main wing. We have this servo connector that plugs into um, the little port, just like the rudder. 
only we've got to slide that out, plug it in, and then uh, use two bolts to secure it. I'm going to have to do that every single time I fly it because the width of this plane is going to be too much for my little car, but that's all right. That is a really cool feature. I love that they made those quick connect things. And right here, we've got an accessories pack. And before we go too much farther, I should not go past the main wing because there have only been three little defects that I've found. One being this crinkle. And I do think they're all shipping related. One is this crinkle in the main wing. One is this tip, just the tip is dinged up right there on the elevator as well as the tip of the elevator right here. Like I said, just the tip. The rest of it is all in great shape. And of course, we've got the missiles back here. Lots and lots of missiles and those slide on. Let me zoom in a little bit on that. All right, so those just slide on. You can take them on and off. Just like these little ventral fins down here. Let's circle back to these. At first in the pictures, I was, was wondering, you know, that might make it really challenging to sit on my, my memory foam in my trunk. But since those slide off, that's going to make it so much easier to transport, get the right angle through the little ski boot hole. At least that is my goal on the surface. And last, but certainly not least, we've got the nose cone right there. It is nice and straight. It does not have the wiggle that the F-16 that I had to send back has. So that is very cool. And that's it, guys. When I come back, I'm going to have this thing all assembled. And hopefully I'll have some tips for you. And that's all coming up next. All right, guys. Here's what this thing looks like all put together. The build is complete. It went together pretty darn easy. There were a few things that... I had to take my time on, one of that being the elevator. One of the elevators wasn't quite as smooth as it was on the other side, so make sure to take your time, sand it down, add a little grease if you need to. I added just a little bit of petroleum jelly, and that seemed to, to smooth it out a little bit, so that is a good thing. Let's do a little demonstration here. I've got my radio in my hands, so let's take advantage of that. We have the air brakes set up on the D switch on my DX6, which is a three position switch. If you go to the second position, there is nothing. However, if you go to the third position, that happens. Going back to the middle, nothing. Going back down, beautiful. All right, so let's do some other stuff. One elevators, or excuse me, ailerons. I'm getting a little tired, guys. Elevators. Look at how sweet that looks, guys. And of course, rudders. And if you look, you can see the lights down there on that main steering wheel. There's three big bright lights, which is really cool. And while we've got this thing with radio in hand, I'm going to turn up the motors a little bit. I'm not going to give her a bunch of goose, but we'll, we'll do something right here, guys. Almost wanted to move. All right. When we come back, I've got a special treat for you. All right, guys, this is the special treat. You are seeing nothing but the LEDs off this plane. This thing is really awesome, really bright. I definitely would not fly this in pitch black, but my goodness, this will certainly help with orientation on those darker days, which happen a lot here in the Pacific Northwest. Coming up next, we're going to do our pros and cons. All right, guys, we're going to do our pros and cons for this big, beautiful jet. As far as the pros go, the assembly was very straightforward. Just follow the manual and you'll be well taken care of. Teardown will be easy at the field and assembly at the field for that matter too, especially if you've got a RC plane rack that's tall with this big, beautiful plane that will come in very handy. 
The paint job, as you can see, looks phenomenal. The functional air brake is awesome. Just an incredible scale detail. I really like that. Another thing I really like are the big bright lights. I love those on RC planes. It also has really nice rugged retracts with excellent suspension, especially that nose wheel. It has so much flex in it. I, it's going to make me that much more comfortable when I come into land because I know it's going to be there to help me out. Now, as far as the cons go, the little antennas on the top right there and on the bottom, that's going to make it a little bit more difficult to transport because I'm trying to, to thread this fuselage through the ski boot hole in my car. So I really would have wished that they would have made those optional. That would have come in handy for me. Uh, the tailpiece, if that little uh, foam piece that I showed earlier, if that would have been magnetized like the nose cone right there, that would make it that much easier to transport because that foam piece does add a good six, seven inches to the back of it. So if you're already in a tight space, it'd be really nice to easily be able to move that. And it looks like I'll be able to mod it pretty easy with magnets. So that's what I'm gonna do before I go and fly it. And last but not least, as far as the cons go, one elevator moved easier than the other. It took a while, quite a while actually, for me to break that in. So there was a little more symmetry with how they moved. But with all that being said, overall, this plane is awesome. GB Linden approved and then some. Like, comment, and subscribe. And GB Linden, out.